Good morning. We're going to get started with our program. Right, um, at this time, Miss Alexis Scott is going to be presiding. So I'm going to let her take it over. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the sixth annual Black History Month Assembly, Cobb Middle School. Thank you all for coming today, oh, this morning. At this time, we're gonna have the processional Cobb Band, Ms. Kendra Winland, director. And welcome and occasion by Makaya Brown. Good morning on behalf of our principal, Mrs. Fitzgerald, assistant principals, Mr. Robertson and Mr. Holmes, as well as Cobb faculty, staff and students, we welcome you into this, our sixth annual Geneva Wesley Black History Assembly. Today, we have prepared a wonderful program that we inspire, enlighten, and even educate our students and community as to the richness of African American heritage. We are gathered here today on this great occasion to not only remember the sacrifice that others have made for us in the struggle for equality, but also to use this gathering to mobilize us to propel ourselves forward. As part of this great celebration, we want you to take the time to appreciate and read about the artifacts in our temporary gallery called the Whaley Collection. This collection of rare African American history is and exhibit our very own Mr. Greg Whaley, a historian himself. This exhibit features items from his personal collection of African American history. While you are here, make sure to stop by, by our media center and view the artwork of Cobb Art Students. This is on display. Again, we welcome you to this grand occasion where our theme is celebrating a century of black life, culture, and history. Thank you. 
At this time, could you please stand for Lift Every Voice and Sing.
Now we will have the Pledge of Allegiance by Julianne Morgan and then a poem by Jakiah Williams. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now we'll have a poem by Jakiria Williams. Pretty, pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my steps, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man the fellow stands or falls down to their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire of my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing of my waist, and the joy of my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. It's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have, have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, you ought to make you, it ought to make you proud. I say it's the click of my heels, the bit of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need of my care. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Next, we'll have Did You Know by Jayla Pinkston, and then an introduction of keynote speaker by DeAndra Coley. Have you ever heard of Maya Angelou? Did you know that she was born Margaret Annie Johnson on April 4th, 1928 in St. Louis, Missouri? Did you know that she died May 28th 2014 at the age of 86. Did you know that she was tricked into writing her autobiography called I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings? Hoped by her friend, novelist James Baldwin, her autobiography was published in 1970 and made the bestsellers list. Originally banned in many schools, did you know that her autobiography talked of how she was abused and how she did not speak for five years because she thought her words could kill someone? Did you know that Maya Angelou never went to college but was honored with over 50 honorary doctorate degrees? was a three-time Grammy winner, as well as Oprah Winfrey's longtime mentor, was awarded the Presidential, Presidential Medal of Arts in 2000. President Barack Obama also presented her the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the country's highest civilian honor in 2010. Did you know that African Americans have a rich heritage of inventors, innovators, pioneers, and creative geniuses that the world still marvel at? Like Garrett Morgan, who invented the gas mask and the traffic signal. Benjamin Banneker, who crafted the first clock to be made in America. George Washington Carver, who discovered over 300 different uses for peanuts, including making cooking oil, axle grease, and printer's ink. Dr. Charles Richard Drew, who revolutionized the medical world's understanding of blood plasma, leading to the innovation of blood banks. George Crum, who did not let a customer complaint hinder, but rather invented the potato chip. Ella Fitzgerald, Madam C.J. Walker, Harriet Tubman, Oprah Winfrey, Mae Je Jemison, Toni Morrison, just to name a few. Did you know? Well, now you know. And if you didn't know before now, why? And what else about Amer African American heritage don't you know about? Well, take all of this knowledge that you have gained today and begin to search, read, and discover that there is a whole lot of African American heritage out there that is waiting to be discovered by you.
Mr. Joe, Mr. Joe N. Thomas has an extensive record of public and civic services to the people of Leon County and the city of Tallahassee, Florida. Mr. Thomas, a native of Tallahassee, Florida, graduated from Amos P. Godby High School in 1970. He went on to graduate from Florida State University where he also played football for the Seminoles from 1970 to 1974. He retired from the city of Tallahassee Parks and Re Recreation Department as a, center, as a center supervisor number two at Walker slash Ford Community Center slash Neighborhood Affairs where he had served in that capacity for 37 years. He is presently, presently the Executive Director of Visions of Manhood Incorporation for the past 19 years. Visions of Manhood Incorporation is a nonprofit organization that, work, that works with individuals to teach them to become product, productive, responsible members of our community. Joe Thomas, Joe Thomas's community and involvement includes Deacon at Mount Horrid, Primitive Baptist Church, member of Mount Horrid Male Chorus and chairman of the Church Scholarship Committee. He is also a past member of the Bong Commu Community Health Center Board of Directors, past, past head coach of Tallahassee Tornadoes semi-pro semi football team and, and member slash chairman of the Leon County Juvenile Justice Council. Joe Thomas's organizational membership, membership and affiliation included IF and I, AMM Grand Joint Council President for the State of Florida, President of the Big Band, Big Band Joint Council, Certified Member of the National State of Florida Recreation and Parks Association, Frontier of American America Incorporation, also founder and past chair of the Southside Coalition of Neighborhoods, to name a few. Um, Mr. Thomas married to Melinda Reese Thomas for 41 years, is the father of three married and successful daughters, Vanessa, Zelina, and Janelle. He is also the grandfather of three beautiful daughters and two handsome grandsons. Let's give a big round of applause and welcome Mr. Joe Thomas. First, I'd like to say good morning to everyone. Good morning. Well, I know you can do better than I to hear anybody from over here. Good morning. Good morning. All right, it is a good morning because we are part of it, right? But uh, I want to say again, I do appreciate the opportunity to come here this morning to be your guest speaker on this special program. And I want to thank the administration here for this opportunity to come and be a part. Because there's a lot of things that I can share with you. I know that I've experienced over the years. But I want to say two things to Ms. DeAndre for that great introduction. I was sitting there and I was just thinking, I said, man, I see why I haven't had a whole lot of time at home. Because I've been busy out in the community doing a whole lot of things. But uh, I just want to, in saying that, she did mention that we do have three daughters and they all are successful young ladies, I can say that. And a lot of it I can give credit to my wife. Because she was the one that was being there most of the time when I was out in the community working with a whole lot of other people. So I wanted to say thanks to her while she's here as well. I would like to say too, about a couple of weeks ago, I was here with three other of my friends and we had an opportunity to talk to some of the young men. And uh, I just want to say to you guys that if you, if you were here, we really appreciated the attention, the, the, just the idea of you guys being such great listeners. We, we didn't have to tell one person to be quiet during that whole session. And they were just great young men and I think you all deserve a hand for just being the guys that you are. And that says a lot about the school, that says a lot about the administration, the different people who work here, because you guys really gave us your undivided attention, and I want to say thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to share one thing with you uh, as far as black history, because I know a lot of you know a lot already, right? Y'all know already, y'all know all about black history, right? Everybody? Okay, well, let, let's get some established real quick. Now, no, normally in church, if you agree what the pastor say, you say what? Yeah. All right, we're going to change it up a little bit this morning. If you agree with what I say, if I say check, 
I want you to tell me. No, I want you to tell me. Check back. All right? They said you agree with me, okay? I don't want you to think about you in church. It's not a church symbol this morning, okay? We have a program here at your school. If you agree with what I say, I want you to say, when I, if you agree with what I say and I say check, I want check back from you, okay? So are you all good students? Check? Yeah. Oh, that's what I want to hear. That's the only right page right there. So I'm actually principal about this later. You know, I know y'all might tell me that. But anyway, I want to share one quick story with you. We're going to talk about some of the things that you as an individual are preparing yourself to make some type of indentation, as I would call it, into black history, or into history in, in general. I want to share this with you real quick. A world without our people. This is a story about a group of white people who were fed up with African Americans. So they joined together and decided to whoosh us away. After wishing so hard, they found themselves in a sort of twilight zone where there was an American, there was America without black people. At first, these visionaries breathed a slight of relief. At last, they said, no more crime, drugs, violence, and welfare. All the blacks have gone. It makes you wonder, where would America be without us? There are very few crops that have flourished because the nation was built on slavery support system. There are no cities with tall skyscrapers because Alexander Miles, a black man, invented the elevator. And without it, one finds great difficulty reaching high flo floors. There are few if there are, if there are cars because Richard Spikes, a black man, invented the automatic gear shift. Joseph Gamel, also a black, invented the search, surcharge system for internal combustion engines, and Gary A. Morgan invented the traffic signs. Furthermore, one could not use the rapid transit system because it's pursued with the electric trolley, which was invented by another black man, Elvin R. Robinson. Even if there were street, streets on which cars and a rapid transit system could operate, they were color, cluttered with paper because of African-American Charles Brooks invented the street sweeper. There were few in any newspaper, magazines, and books because John Love invented the pencil shopman. William Pravick invented the fountain pen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lee Burridge invented the typewriter machine. <clears throat> W.A. Lovett invented the advanced printing press. They were all black. Even if America could write their letters, articles, and books, they would not have been transported by mail because William Berry invented the postmaster and, and um, canceling machine. William Purvis invented the hand stamp, and Philip Down invented the letter drop. The lawns were brown and wooded because Joseph Smith invented the lawn sprinkler, and John Burrow the lawnmower. When they entered their homes, they found them to be poorly ventilated and heated. You see, Frederick Jones invented the air conditioner, and Alex Parker, the heating furnace. Their homes was also filthy because Thomas W. Stewart invented the mop, and Lord P. Ray, the dustpan. Their children met them at the door barefooted, shabbed, molded, and unkept. But what could not one expect? John E. Manzler invented the shoelacing machine. Walter Simon invented the comb. Lighter O. Newman invented the brush. Sarah Boone invented the ironing board. George T. Simon invented the clothes, clothes dryer. Finally, they were res res resigned at to leave have, to have dinner amidst of all the turmoil. But here again, the food had spoiled because another black man, John Strafford, invented the refrigerator. No lights on eat their spoiled food because the, the filament within the light bulb was invented by a black man. What would this world be without us? Check. All right. Okay, now, those are great things that other blacks have done in this country. Okay, and we respect that wholeheartedly. All right, but now we are going to be looking for some new individuals to come along the way and do some of the things that some of these other people are doing. 
I can remember when I was going to school, it was during the time of when, when segregation first really got started after I got to high school, elementary school, going to Southwest, Pineview as it's known now. But you know, it was totally all black school. And I can look out here now and see the diversity, and we, everybody now has more of an equal opportunity to learn. We have an opportunity to learn as well, but we had teachers who made sure, they made sure that you learn. Okay, and I think we all have some of the same type teachers here. Because I was talking to the principal just a second ago, and I know she said she's been here like three years, and I always hear good things about Cobb Middle School. And it's because you all are giving it your best. And you don't have to continue to do that because you never know. And I say this, I'm not afraid to say God in the church. I'm not, I'm not afraid to say God in the school. Because we need God everywhere we go. We're going to have to have God in our lives. We're going to have God to let everybody know that we love one another. This is why we're going to have to stop some of this crime that's going on in our communities. Because when we don't love each other, we do anything to one another. Check? Check. All right. So we, what, what, what are we going to do? We're going to start trying to make sure that we let everyone know that we're going to give them the right to love you and you're going to love them back. All right? Because it's so easy because some of us are blessed to be able to do some of the things that we want to do. Some of us are not as blessed because we didn't have the type of things that we really needed when we were coming up. I can say on my behalf, and I thank God for my parents. Both of them are going on home now, but I can actually say that they were good parents. You know, they supported me. And I'm sure that you all would like the same thing from you all's parents. And you don't want to embarrass your parents when you leave home. So many of you do things, and you think, well, mom is not looking or dad is not looking, well, it's okay. But then again, when things come up to be the final, to be the final part of what you have done, and now you have gotten yourself in trouble, the first person you want to call is mom or dad. Check. Check. Oh, that's a sorry check. 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 Tell the truth. Let's tell the truth. So the bottom line is, when we talk about black history now, I'm, I'm, I want to think of it as you being that new step into black history, or into history alone. Because you all have something to offer. God has blessed all of us with a talent. Sometimes we have to dig a little bit deeper to find what that talent really is. But you have a talent. And don't give up on that. Sometimes you might miss out on, on a quiz or on a test or whatever. You might not make the, the grades you want, but work a little bit harder the next time. How many of you know students who come to school they don't even bring a pencil? If check, that's right, check. So what are they coming to school for? How many of them don't even bring their, take their books on to study? Do you know any students like that? Check. Tell the truth. So our thing is we got to start looking out for each other. If you see, and I'm going to call a knucklehead, that he don't want or she don't want to take a book home or take a pen home, always got to borrow your pen. Hey, do you have a pen today? I can use to write this down. That's not telling me they're coming to school to learn. Don't be afraid to tell them because you're going to help them out by saying, bring your pen to school tomorrow. And there's nothing wrong to loan someone a pen if you have an extra one. I'm not saying that. But I'm going to bet you, every one of you in here, if there's a fight going on somewhere around this school, I bet you know about it. Check? Yeah. All right, so why don't you go in and tell someone in the administration, say, look, I know that something's fixing to go down. That, you don't have to be a snitch to do that. All you do is keep it down problems from your school. Because if something go on, guess what's going to happen? Everybody in the school going to look bad. Y'all hear about these things that are going on into our schools now. You all know that. But you don't want it to be a part of it in your school. Don't be afraid to go and tell your, your teacher or your administrators or, or, or your deans or whatever what's going on. If you know somebody with a gun in a locker, you need to let somebody know. Boy, I ain't going to snitch today, man. I can't go tell them a boy, you know. Next thing you know, your boy has shot three or four kids and possibly even you. So we got to start thinking above that snitch thing. I hear it all the time. Oh, I can't snitch on my boy. I can't snitch on my girl. Check? Yeah. I know that's a big thing now. You don't want to do that. But when we're talking about black history, I'm a strong believer in that our history today is just as, as important as it was back in the days. We had all these other pioneers coming to fight for equality for us. But we got to show where we appreciate it. There's a lot of people who have lost their lives for us to have the right 
that we have today. But we don't have separate water fountains and bathrooms and restaurants and all this. We all now can go pretty much wherever we want to, sit down and eat if we got our money. Don't go there and eat without our money. But well, they ain't gonna let you over there talking about washing on dishes. They're gonna be calling the police. Okay? So if you got the money, pretty much you can go eat wherever you want to go eat. Okay? So it's important. Listen. Do what you need to do in order to make yourself the best person you can be. Guess what? You are an original. There will never be another you. Chad? So what you gonna do about it? You wanna try to make that person the best person you possibly can, because there will never be another you. You hear a lot of, I wanna be like Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was an original. You might pray and pray as well, I wouldn't say as well, but close to it, or even above as well as he prayed. But Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. Okay? Now we want to start looking at some people here. We have members right in this room right here. If you guys would pattern yourself after them and want to do some great things, you can do it. We have Mr. Marvin Henderson sitting right out here. Local young man from Tallahassee, went to school here. But what is he doing now? Who know who Mr. Marvin Henderson is? I see about four hands out there. Mr. Marvin Henderson, would you mind standing and raise your hand, please, sir? He's the assistant school superintendent. Now, tomorrow, if anybody asks you all, who is Mr. Marvin Henderson? You should be able to tell him, right? Because he's here supporting you all's program. And that's what it's all about. And I'm going to say this. All you have to do now is to want it bad enough to make it happen. You just can't listen to anything and take that as another resort to not do something. Our system out there today is not playing with you all. You get out there, you break the law, you pay the penalty. You need to be responsible for your actions. Don't think you're going to be slick all your days and get away with things. If you are lucky enough and get by one time, you better let it go. I don't think none of us sitting here can say that we have not done something wrong in our lives. But we were not caught. Okay? Hello? Check. Yeah. I could think I could hear the grown people say that. Check. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So all I'm saying to you all, you know when not to do something. You know, you know right from wrong. You know right from wrong. And I'll say this. Young people, you want to make sure when you make decisions, if you see your name in the paper tomorrow, you need to want to get in there for something positive. You don't want to be in the paper just to be in the paper because you done hit somebody upside the head or broke somebody home or stole a car. They put in there for that too now. But you wanted to be in there for something positive, right? Yeah. Check? Yeah. All right, so that's what we're going to work on. We want to start doing things that we're going to be able to say that we was a part of history ourselves, whether it's black history, but be a part of something positive. Leave your, leave, you want to leave a legacy. You want to leave a legacy that you have done something good for somebody else. How many of you can say you've done something good for somebody else this week? Oh, that's not a whole lot of hands. We gotta work on that. We need to work on it. There's nothing wrong with helping someone else. That's how we're gonna make it in this world. All right, that's good. Check? Yeah. All right, check also means I'm getting a little loud. You gotta quiet it down. Thank you. So let's, let's, let's continue to remember that. We've had a lot of people, as I said earlier, have struggled for us to do and be and, and able to do some of the things that we're doing today. And we don't need to turn our back on that and just think we got it made now, because we don't have it made. We still have a long, long ways to go. But it's going to take people like yourselves to make it happen over here, over here. And try to get involved in some kind of activity at school. Everybody is not going to be professional athletes. But you know what, them athletes are going to need someone to help take care of them when they get old. You might want to have some nurses around. I had an opportunity to play football, and I know what it does to you. I'm still right now having surgery on my, I've had surgery on my knee, on my shoulder, and this something happened 
almost 40 years ago. So believe me, as, age, as you age, it's going to catch up with you. You want to start preparing for those days. And I like to tell this to a lot of our young people as well. One day, you're going to become 18 years old. And mom, all she got to do and dad said, I want you out of my house. Now, most of the time, if you're going to school or you're in college, they'll let you hang around a little bit and tell you, you know, don't, don't take 20 years to get out of college now. But some of us, and I know some individuals have done that, but they were out on their own taking care of themselves so they could do that. But all I'm saying is, mom and dad, I think we got some parents in here right now. I don't think there's one parent who going to take care of their children all their life. Parent check, there's a check. <laughs> so you need to be preparing yourself now to take care of yourself. This is what school is all about. That should be your main responsibility right now, is to go to school, pass your grades, graduate, try to take up a trade, or go to college, or whatever it's going to take, in order for you to be successful. I don't think nobody in here, none of my teachers, anyone else who have done whatever type of work, just someone reached in their pocket, say, here, here's success. If that's the case, everybody would be successful because I'm sure there's no parent that want their kid not to be successful. But in order to be successful, you're going to have to have a great education. You're going to need that education. You're going to have to work hard. You got to have a strong desire to want to be successful. And I'll tell you the last part, I believe in myself, you can take it for what it's worth, but you need to have a good spiritual background. If you put those four things together, I promise you that you will be successful. But success comes with hard work. You got to have that desire to want it in your heart. But someday, I, I knew when I was in school, and, and I, I was at Godby High School at the time, and, and even at NIMS when I was over there, I did not want to work hard. I said, now, Lord, I, I, you got to show me what I'm going to do. I want, my thing was to play professional football. I think everybody who ever went to college wanted to play professional football. It didn't happen to me. But one thing I did do, I went and got my degree. And I said, now, the next best thing I want to do is to do what I like doing. I always like to play. And I said, recreation, huh? That sounds pretty good to me. I can play and get paid. And that's what I've done for 37 years. I was a professional basketball player. I was a professional tennis player. I was a professional ping pong player. I was a professional jackstone player. But I did it all. I played with the kids. So if I don't play with them, guess what? I'm still to get paid. So I was a professional, right? And I was doing what I enjoyed. I never went home one day and hated my job. I didn't mind going back to work the next day. But I was going to play and make money. OK? But there were some administrative things that go along with it. There's some supervision, all that kind of good stuff. But the majority of the time, I had fun working and greeting people that I see a lot of people out here I know today, but I met them through my work. And I enjoyed that. So all I'm saying, young people, do and start thinking now what you want to do. What you going to do about history? A lot of the things that I could get, I mean, I got some stuff that I could read to you. I don't, that's not what it's about to me today. You all can go and read that for yourself. You can find it in your encyclopedia. But all I want you all to remember out of everything I say today, that you are an original. You make what you want out of yourself. But it's going to take hard work. It's going to have to take desire. It's going to have that education. And you're going to need to have a good spiritual background. With that, I want to say thank you. And my last check. Yeah. Thank you much. Next, we will have the choir selection by the chorus.
the student film by Miss Mice and theater students. History Committee, we want to thank everybody for coming out today. Dr. Jones, Dr. Henderson, Ms. Geneva Wesley. Come on up, please, ma'am. I want to welcome
welcome Ms. Wesley home to Cobb. When I started, she was one of the folks who supported me. <laughs> <laughs> and she's back, and it's glad we're glad to have you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll put this on you in a moment, okay? okay. I would just like to thank uh, Principal uh, Fitzgerald and um, and sponsor Dr. Cooley and my whole Cobb family. I feel as if I'm a part of this family, and it is just so uh, rewarding to come back each year. It that message was phenomenal and we all could learn from that because we really are all part of the same village and together we make things happen and I am just pleased today to have uh, so many of my uh, family members, uh, church members, uh, hookup members, classmates, friends, to be here today. And I would just like for all of you all to just sort of wave your hand if you came as an invitation here, if you're part of that group, family. OK. And uh, a very special person that I really, and I know I'm going to steal Mrs. Fitzgerald Thunder because I know she's going to invite him up here. But I'm going to take liberty and ask him to come up now. And this is uh, Dr. Marvin Henderson, Associate Superintendent. And although he has a lot of things that he could be doing today, he did take the time to come here. And Marvin is real special because I've known him most of my life. We graduated from junior high together, high school together, and college together, and he is the president of our high school class. And because of him, we do have some people who are here, so I want to just thank you all for coming, and I'm going to give way now to Dr. Henderson. Thank, thank you, Ms. Wesley. I just want to thank uh, Ms. Ms. Fitzgerald, Ms. McBride, uh, all of these wonderful teachers you have here at Cobb and uh, the absolutely awesome students that I hear so much about all the time. Uh, you're one of 34,000 students that, uh, for which I'm responsible and I certainly take my job seriously. But this is quite an honor. And I, let me tell you this, I appreciate, I appreciate your behavior today. You have been awesome. Give yourselves a round of applause. And let me, let me quickly say this and then I'm going to be done. Uh, Ms. Wesley has always, uh, as she mentioned, we, we've known each other, it seems like, forever. In addition to being <laughs> classmates and all of that, we're cousins also, so she missed that. Uh, Check. <laughs> Check. So she, and she is a wonderful, she is an absolutely wonderful person, someone you need to, uh, you need to know. Uh, I've been waiting to see her name on those 25 women you need to know, and I, it's about time, Ms. Wesley, that we get your name up there. But we've got a, we had a very, we have a super graduating class, and Ms. Wesley, as well as there are several others I've, I've seen out here. Uh, but we're all uh, kind of retired now. Some, some of us are retired. I, I continue to work. But one of the things that we have tried to do over our lives is to make a mark. Uh, exactly what Mr. Thomas, that I've known forever it seems, what he said to you. And right now, today is the first day of the rest of your life. You may have done something yesterday. Well, you can start over today. That's the good thing about being in America. Every day is a new day for you. And so you can make whatever it is that you're going to accomplish. You're an original. You can do it. So just thank you so much for having me here. Ms. Wesley, thank you for inviting me up. I love you. 
and uh, we'll, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, during February, we celebrate life, history, culture, and recognize the contributions of African Americans in today's society. The, the music, the art, the literature, all of the contributions. You heard some of the, the things that Mr. Thomas mentioned in his speech. All of the, the things that we take for granted today that were created. Were it not been for African Americans, we would not have that. So we, we celebrate that. We are very fortunate today to have Mr. Thomas here. One of the things that was not mentioned about Mr. Thomas is that he was one of the first African Americans in Tallahassee to receive a scholarship to play football at FSU. So students, uh, faculty, staff, we want to again thank Mr. Thank Mr. Thomas for coming out today, those very inspirational words, and I hope you take heed to those as you move back to your classes today. So let's give him another round of applause. We're also so very fortunate uh, to have the community members guests. If you were the guests, my guests, please stand up. Students, give them a round of applause for taking time out of their busy schedule today. <laughs> Thank you so very much for coming out every year and support Cobb Middle School. I also see, see Dr. Shirley Jones, who spent many, many years here at Cobb Middle School as a teacher. Thank her for coming back. Also, I cannot, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Ms. Wendelin, who and her <laughs> band. <laughs> Dr. Coley and the orchestra. <laughs> Mr. Roy and the magnificent Coley. <laughs> they spent many, many hours practicing outside of the school day, so thank you so much. Okay, um, the Black History Program sponsors, thank you so much for putting this together today. Uh, Dr. Coley headed that this year, first year. He did an awesome job, and I thank him. All of my students here that were on the program today and my Beta Club members that, that helped, thank you. Okay, we're right on schedule today, which is a first. Uh, students, thank you so much for, for your um, great behavior today. You really represented Cobb well and made me very proud. <laughs>